front here, the 52 car of Jimmy Means as they came out onto the backstretch, tapping another car. They got together. Means went sideways right in front of traffic. And then, as they say, it busted loose behind him. Watch Harry Gant, top of your picture, no place to go. And boom, big impact as he spins around and catches the front of Gant's car and rips virtually the whole tail off the 52 Means machine. And then Harry Gant's car came skittering down onto the apron. The left front virtually ripped off the car. And the end of the day for the man who yesterday won the Grand National race here at Richmond. So it's been happy and sad for Harry Gant as the leader, number 28, Davey Allison, continues his work up front. That wraps up our Goodyear mid-race recap of the Richmond 400. At the moment, Allison is clearly in the driver's seat, but we've got an awful lot of action yet to come from this brand-new facility. 53,000 folks looking on, and we'll be back with more of the excitement in a moment. Working 234 laps of the 400 to be run here at Richmond in this $389,000 Winston Cup event. Davey Allison here in number 28 continues to lead, putting another lap on Mike Walter. And let's look at the interval between the number 28 car and the second place car, number 26, Ricky Rudd, right there. It sugars off to about eight and eight tenths of a second between first and second. And back to third, where car number seven lies. There you see him just coming across the start finish line. That's another four seconds back there as Davey Allison has them covered here at Richmond before 53,000 fans sold out grandstand. Good crowd in the infield of this new three-quarter mile facility. And so far, it's Davey's day after Earnhardt fell back the early going. Davey is within four and three-tenths of a second of lappy Bill Elliott, and he also is about... Uh, a few car lengths away, about 20 car lengths away from lapping Darrell Waltrip in the eighth position. Here's Darrell the 17 coming by. The track has really nailed it a minute ago, John. It, it's a skating rink out there. You see them slithering and sliding and skittering up toward the wall on, on all vantage points. There isn't any place you can really get a bike now. And it's both high and low. They run this track really in. Well, it'll be a good shot to go back to one of those in-car cameras now because we saw them early and how smooth and easy they were driving. And uh, I think we'll see hands working a lot more in the turns now. Bobby Hillen Jr. has just pitted car number eight, running in 20th position. Hillen is on pit road. But it's kind of crazy watching cars come out of turn four and about every third car, you see them having to grab a handful of steering wheel and try to straighten them up. Meanwhile, Davey Allison, here comes Bobby Hillen back on the racetrack. Davey Allison, 28, is closing on car number 17, Waltrip. There's Waltrip in the 17, and there you see Mike Alexander in the 12 car. Mike's a couple of, uh, Mike is running 14th and is a lap down now. In the Bobby Allison, number 12, Mike Alexander, who takes over to run that car next year. A little three wide racing out of turn four in this new track. As Davey Allison tries to put a lap on Waltrip, the eighth place driver in the event. We watched Darrell Walter he'll use Mike Alexander, the number 12 car, like a master to try to block Davey. And now Darrell is running up on the slower car, Jimmy Means, and I'm sure Davey will get by now. Nope, Darrell jerked up there, so he's still uh, in a perfect blocking situation. That's just closing the door on him and uh, hoping that a caution will come. And uh, this is where, you know, your smart race car driver try to hold him there and uh, try to get a caution. 238 complete. Ten lead changes on seven drivers thus far. And try to so throw David just the eye of the needle. Yeah, he just takes the free lap. No problem. Mike. Right up the middle, Davey Allison. It's going to take some learning still to get this track down. Conditions changing every lap anyway out here. Lose off some weight and fuel. The tires change. Davey driving that controls up. He has Waltrip now on the inside of the 17. And Davey Allison. The car hasn't missed a beat all day, has it? No, and this is where he runs the risk of uh, forcing the issue a little too much, heating those tires up and, and getting pushed up a little too high out of the groove and spinning it around. And uh, that's where you have to watch these cagey old veterans. They'll use that racetrack up on you, but Davey looks like he's got him cleared this time. Davey Allison coming by, and he is now for a lap on everyone except seventh place Bill Elliott, sixth place Mark Martin, fifth place Dale Earnhardt, fourth place Terry Labonte, third Alan Kowicki, and 
second Ricky Rutt as he maintains a very steady hand, even pace. He leads here at Richmond, Virginia. 243 laps complete. Malkin sticks on the bottom of the racetrack. The story of these four. Yeah, we mentioned a little while ago, everyone was discounting uh, this business about the mid-range power, the John Hayes theory of mid-range power of the Ford cars, but it seems to be pretty good here today. Well, I think it's absolutely true because all my General Motors experts told me that, and all my <laughs> Ford experts said that's absolutely a bunch of junk. So uh, I would assume it's probably uh, a coin flip, but it made a good story anyway. But the Fords do really pull good off the corners. If you remember the great days of Bill Elliott, he would always beat you in the turns. It, uh, it always had good straightaway speed or equal straightaway speed but he would always beat you in the turns. Bill Elliott's loving this that they're running door to door because he is pulling away. It's going to help him from keeping, keep him from getting lapped, he's hoping. But see, now here's Darrell running under a slower car, Benny Parsons. Well, let's go three wide again. <laughs> One thing Davey's not is uh, playing it conservative. He's, uh, he's had all this he's going to take. And, just going to force him, try to find him a slow car. Phil Parsons uh, pitting once again. Meanwhile, down on pit road, Bob Barsha has this report. Well, Ken Schrader just came through for a four-tire pit stop and had fuel added to the race car. And one of the interesting things about when they come through here is watching the gas man. In the case of Kenny Schrader, that man is Henry Benfield. You may be able to see climbing over the wall right now. Notice the uniform he's wearing. Benfield's considered the best at his job, manhandling those big 22-gallon dunk cans, the most dangerous job in a pit stop. A year ago, Henry saw a fire in Talladega, Alabama in a pit, and he decided that something needed to be done, so he found himself a flame-retardant driver's suit and gloves and hat that he wears during Ken Schrader's pit stop. He also talked it up with his fellow gas man up and down pit road. So throughout Winston Cup racing, you'll see the gas men wearing flame retardant uniforms, not because the rules say they have to, but because they want to. Henry has spent years with Junior Johnson, and when he invented that suit, he had got a little too tight. And uh, at one the first time or second time he wore it, he split the seat all the way up and had to spend the day like that. Henry's kind of a mild-mannered person he hasn't got over that embarrassment yet. Well, but Henry he's, was sort of proud of it. Absolutely. You know, he got to visit. He got a whole lot of attention. Phil Parsons uh, has been on pit road now for four or five laps. He, uh, they're under the hood of his car, so he must have an engine problem. So you race fans, uh, here is a rundown, a complete rundown of who's on the field here. You see Kyle Petty in ninth, and uh, Phil is then being shown in tenth from four or five laps ago. They put it together for you to give you an idea about where some of your favorites are that might not be up here in the top 10 today. Bill Bonnet's still out here. Remember, he won the last race on the half mile in that very dramatic finish. We had the last time out. Average speed for this event is we're up to 253 laps complete. It's really come down with those uh, long caution periods and the track really getting slippery. They've greased her up real good. Alan Kowicki in the uh, seven car is in the third spot. There you see him, and coming up on him is the fourth place man, number 11. That's Terry Labonte. Terry Labonte, who won a short track race at North Wilkesboro earlier this season. That's not fair to say when you say short track. Short track's a quarter mile, third mile. Out North Wilkesboro is five eighths and a darn good one. I had a long talk with Alan Kowicki, and he's always been a great qualifier and run great at certain tracks. And he said that uh, the rap against him a lot of times is he'll qualify good, run good early, and drop back. And he said he hopes to overcome that. He said a lot of it's inexperience setting the car up because he is his own crew chief and making the changes. But uh, he lately is getting better, better, and better. And he's running a very strong third here today. Indeed he is. Only people in front of him, Davey Allison on the point and Ricky Rudd in second. Terry Labonte right behind him in fourth. Benny Parsons has just pitted again. He sure makes it look easy out there, and you know he has it right on the edge, and he's skating that car. Notice how he uses that steering wheel. Doesn't clutch or grab, no white knuckles on him. Just floats it in there. The other thing I'm noticing is it's using the uh, left leg there for the brake, Candy. He does even though this is much more like a super speedway than it used to be, you still have to break into the corners. And notice that he's doing that with his left foot. He keeps the engine RPMs up with the right, uses the left foot to brake. The other thing I notice about Cole Wicke is, even though it's not white knuckles, he is having to saw that wheel a good deal more than he was early on. 